it, it is not a crime to make money off your last name. They detail all kinds of potential crimes. You know, Senator Grass. Oh, 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 let me just stop you there. The, potential. Uh, about, this about, is about about about, about 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 potential about, is about, about thir- You don't invite me on to interview me. You invite me on to argue with me. You know, I'm just trying to lay out the facts that certainly Senator Grass and I uncovered. They were suppressed. They were censored. They interfered in the 2020 election. NBC's Chuck Todd questioning Republican probes into Hunter Biden, the latest in a string of media outlets turning a blind eye to the Biden family's business dealings. This, even after they admitted fault in suppressing the New York Post's laptop story. So we have New York Post reporter John Levine is with me now. It's great to have you. The, um, Chuck Todd has been covering the news. This is in the news. Um, he has a, a way that he asks questions. Let, let, let's look back uh, to his qu- uh, questioning of James Comer, who is a congressman from Kentucky. Watch here. Tell me wh- how you're going to try to departisanize an investigation, or do you expect it to be partisan? Well, with all due respect, Chuck, I, I disagree with that. I think the only people that see this as a partisan investigation are the media and the hardcore Democrats. Everything that we have requested, we have evidence to back up. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, the evidence is right there on the hard drive, and anyone can go look at it. So when Chuck Todd says, well, what crime has been committed here? Is it a crime to lie on a federal gun form and say you're not addicted to drugs when you clearly are? Is prostitution still a crime in this country? There's many obvious prima facie crimes right on that hard drive that you can go look at. And then there's the stuff like money laundering and violations of like the Foreign Agent Registration Act, which we can't say for sure these crimes are committed, but they're under investigation definitely. So we'll wait and see. But definitely crimes were committed. And do you think that the, well, the White House has already indicated that from the counsel's office that the Republicans are going to have to start over on their document request. So they'll try to slow walk this for a while. They are going to drag this out as long as they can, which is their right. And the the oversight committee knew that was what was going to happen. But the process will play out. Okay. Then there's another one, which is um, a new uh, committee about has federal has the federal government sort of weaponized against the people right. and then there was this question of whether about fbi communications with twitter here's that your headline congressman jordan probed zero in on fbi communications with twitter so what's happening there will they have to testify so jim jordan i think is going to be the busiest man in congress this year because he's got to run this subcommittee he's also going to be in charge of the judiciary committee and he's also going to be on the oversight committee and working on the hunter probe But I think when when I spoke to him, he said that one of the key focuses of the subcommittee hearing on weaponization of the FBI, Department of Justice, is going to be communications between the FBI and Twitter in the immediate run-up to the suppression of the post-Hunter Biden laptop reporting, specifically an email on the night of October 13th, just hours before we went to press, where Elvis Chan, the FBI handler for Twitter, sent company executives 10 documents. And, and they're encrypted, and we can't read them, and we don't know what they say. But he said, this is important. Please confirm receipt when you have them. Okay. And we don't know what they were, and we need to know what they were. Okay, so that, might, that committee hearing might reveal that. Jordan is certainly hopeful. Okay, then I want to ask you about this, because it's a New York story, but it has national implications. Mayor Adams uh, went to the border. No. Okay, and c- because he's realizing he's got a big problem here. He wanted to, said he wanted to go see it for himself. Let's watch him here. No city deserves what is happening and we must immediately have a short-term fix of making sure that the cost of this does not fall on our local cities we cannot have these disjointed responses we must have a coordinated response this is a national emergency and crisis that must be addressed that way he's not wrong there and he's going to the national conference of mayors meeting on thursday apparently he might be the mayor that's going to have to try to lead the federal government to water here. The brass taxes, New York City is a border town now. We are a border city. We're getting 400, 500 migrants a day. We've opened dozens of new emergency shelters. We had a literal tent city here in Manhattan on Randall's Island until not that long ago. And I think what we're seeing is a real vindication of Governor Abbott's strategy of spreading the pain of illegal immigration more equitably across the country. And now what you're seeing is a big city mayor, Democrat like Mayor Adams, actively calling on President Biden to come up with a broad solution to this issue. So we'll see if he has an impact. I'm going to be watching that meeting on Thursday with great interest because there's a lot of mayors who are feeling that pain and it's only going to get worse. Yeah. Uh, But it's a Monday, so we won't talk about things getting worse. We'll have a great day today. John Levine, thanks for being here.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.